The Borough Borough Life Life Podcast Podcast with James and Rosie. Hello and welcome back to the Borough Life Podcast. Rosie, unbelievably we're up to episode 7, who'd have thought we'd come this far? What have we got on today? So welcome to our Feel Good Special. In today's episode we meet Amy and Kira, who are the brains behind the global movement and brand of Feel Good Club. Absolutely Rosie, Uh, it's a really inspiring story isn't it about Feel Good Club and we delve into their origin story a little bit. Uh, I know you're a big fan and I feel like your fandom for Feel Good Clubs only increased since we've done this interview. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's it's going to be a good one. It definitely has and I'm sure many of you will have seen the positive affirmations on the billboards across the country but we're really proud to have one of our own right here in Wigan Borough. Um, so this episode is definitely set up to be one of my favourites personally. I think you're right Rosie, it's nice to talk about a success story isn't it, uh, based in Wigan Borough. We should have mentioned it's not just Amy and Kira, is it? It's uh, Juno the dog as well. How could we forget? How could we forget who was there throughout the interview? Um, and you might see in the pictures of us when we from when we visited. So should we just get on with the episode? Yeah, definitely. Let's go. So hi everyone, welcome back to the Borough Life podcast. Uh, it's Rosie here and James, and we are in Manchester City Centre at Feel Good Club with two very special guests. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, you missed out the third special guest. Oh yeah, how (laughs) how dare (laughs) that? The star of the show. Um, So yeah, I'm Kira. Um, I'm one of the founders of Feel Good Club. And I'm Amy, the other, the better founder. (laughs) (laughs) The better half, that's what I always say. And Juno's the third half, the uh, third, no, quarter, third quarter, the dog, the main main ingredient to uh, a great coffee shop. She looks very relaxed (laughs) (laughs) at the minute. Um, So, the reason we're here is obviously you have built a global brand, a global movement, um, and we like to say from your back, back room in Tilsley, is that right? That is yeah. right. It is started from our spare bedroom over in Astley. Um, yeah, just over two and a half years ago now, isn't it? Two and a half years ago, yeah. We, uh, it was just like a tiny, tiny room in our house, and we were like, what are we going to do with this? And then when we decided to start the brand called Feel Good Club, we were like, we should turn it into an office. It'll make us feel important. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that and it did. did. And um, it did. And then we bought our own screen printer. We bought our own sewing machine. And then we got to work in there. So Ashley and our little bedroom is a... It's still actually set up as... Oh, no, it's not anymore. No, it's now my dressing room. So it is now your dressing room. Cool. And we've got a big office which you're in today. Yeah. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a bit... Obviously, you've, you've told us how it started. But what, what kind of made you think right this is this is the time we're going to start feel good club yeah so the initial concept of, of feel good club and um the initial idea for it actually happened quite a bit before didn't it back in 2015 i had been struggling with an eating disorder for quite a long time and uh, realized that in order to to kind of really kick start my recovery i needed to start to focus on something positive and that was it, it was Feel Good Club, wasn't it? I, we had a studio apartment and um, one day sat on the floor thinking about what I was gonna do, how I was gonna get something positive to focus on. The name Feel Good Club just, just came to me. So I started an Instagram page, a little bit different to what it is now. It's a similar concept, but it was a lot more cheesy. I've definitely <laughs> refined my tone of voice and the way that I speak um, online now. And I started sharing a little bit of my journey and then to bring it into the physical world, I decided to start making some candles. So got to work on, on my candle venture, had no idea what I was doing, and this is like a running theme throughout the whole business, is <laughs> each step of the way we've had no idea and we've just figured it out. Um, and I started making candles from our studio apartment. One day Amy got home from work and was like, right, I found more wax in my food because we didn't have any, um, any money to invest into the business, so I was using our pots and pans that we were cooking from. Um, and Amy was like, right, what are we doing with this? And I kind of was like, it's not, it's not the right time. I was still very early days of my recovery, so I, I found it difficult to, to put into words kind of how I was feeling in order to put that out into the world. So uh, we, we left it for a little bit, didn't we? Then We did, we left it. Kira went and got an air quote, a real job, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I was also working a nine-to-five sales rock job. And then we got married, we got a house, we got the dog, we did a bit of traveling, we did everything that like society says that's like, gonna make you happy. And then once we've done all that, I one day turned around in 2018. Yeah, just after we got married, you told me you weren't happy. <laughs> <laughs> With you, I was happy. Um, I turned around and was just like, I'm still not, something's still not like fulfilling me enough, I don't know what it is, I think it might be my career. 
So I was like, maybe we should start Fugal Club back up. Like we, we, it was always like in the back of our brains, but we never really had a plan. It was just like always there. And then for some reason that date just came to the front of my head and I was like, we should start Fugal Club. And Kay was like, okay, well, how'd you see it? I was like, I'm not sure yet. Give me a few days and I'll figure that out. But I think we should definitely do something. And then a few days later, I was like, why don't we start making clothes? Because at the university, I was doing my own little clothing brand called Why Not? And Kira used to do events and music. So I was like, why don't we like start making our own clothing? Do a little some events around Manchester and Wigan and everywhere else. And we can then see what happens. So we did. We bought um, our first screen print and our first sewing machine. But how did we buy that? Again, we had no money to invest into it, did we? No. And we got a... Um, we got a a refund from Airbnb that we wasn't expecting of 500 pounds. We'd never, it was like, it was meant to be, wasn't it? Like we'd stayed at this place. We'd never applied for a refund for it. It was great. It was a place in Brighton. Uh, if anyone wants to link to it, it's beautiful. <laughs> so let me know. Definitely didn't need to be refunded. Um, and we kept getting these letters through the door saying, confirm your bank details. And we thought it was a scam. So we just like left it. And then one day Amy checked the bank and she was like, Airbnb has refunded us 500 quid. And it was whilst we were talking and discussing feel good clothes. Like, it's a sign. Um, it's a sign. It's a sign. So so let's do it. And the the whole thing was how can we? Our, and our aim still is is to just make one person feel good about themselves every single day. So we started the Instagram page back up again from our spare room. We bought the screen print of the sewing machine. Went on YouTube. Taught ourselves to screen print and sew. And the idea behind the clothing was that um, whenever you wear it, you're reminded of kind of the message of feel good club and. If you see someone in the street who's got the Feel Good Club beanie on, you know that you share similar values. And we've actually had really lovely stories, haven't yeah. we, of people actually meeting and sparking a conversation and friendship just because they were wearing Feel Good Club. Um, so yeah, it, it just took off. That's how it? it began again. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, I mean, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? And uh, I can't imagine it in candle wax. Uh, <laughs> I I yeah, that it, wasn't great. I used to think it was parmesan, and after a bit, I was like, no, wait a minute. It's a bit know, chewy. It tastes cheesy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm hearing kind of about Feel Good Club for the first time a little bit today. Um, I, I've been aware of your Instagram for a while, but how do you describe? This might be a difficult one to answer. Actually, when people say to you, "Well, what do you guys do?" Like, how do you describe it? We get that. We get all it all the time. So what is it? And we're like, the thing with us and what I, what we and Kira promote all the time is, as well, I think everybody always tries to put you in a box. Like everything, whatever, what career you are, relationship, everything, everything's always been put in a box. So when people say to us, so what is it? We're like, well, it's anything it wants to be. So for us, it's a coffee shop. It's a technically a restaurant because we sell food. It's an event space. We're a clothing brand. We're events management because we put events on. Um, we're, planning, we're, we're authors. There's so much to Feel Good Club. The physical space is a coffee shop and events space, but the brand itself, for us, it's endless. And the, the message, whatever we do, whatever it looks like, if it's awards, festivals, book, whatever it is, is just to make one person feel good every single day, whatever that looks like. If that's reading the book, if that's wearing the clothes, if that's coming to an event. So for us, we, we get that question all the time because it's like, it's so many different things. It's like, well, because we don't want to, we don't want to be put in a box. We want it to, mm. why can't we be everything? Because feeling good, making someone feel good looks different to so many different people. Like for me, feeling good is playing football. For you, it could be playing a game on your PlayStation, whatever that looks like. So for us, Feel Good Club brand is there to make everybody feel good. So that's why we try and do loads of different things to try and make everybody feel good. It's a movement, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a, a purpose-driven brand that is there to, to try and make people feel good about themselves in a non, um, in like a non-toxic positivity way. There's a, a, a lot of conversation around toxic positivity of, you know, um, just putting on a brave face or just smile and forget about it. Someone's doing worse or other people are doing worse than you. Whereas our message is that, you know, the end goal isn't to feel good every single day. It's that we're human and we're gonna have bad days. So it's been comfortable and knowing that when you are having a bad day or a bad day arises, you have the tools and the strength to get through it and that it will get better eventually. And trying to get people to talk about that more and just normalizing that conversation around feelings. Feel Good Club's a big umbrella for, for just things that are here to make you feel good. We, we talk a lot about mental health because the brand was born from my own experiences with my mental health. Um, but we're always very clear in the fact that we're not therapists. Yeah. We are mental health first aid trained should 
um, anyone come to us in crisis, we can signpost them. Um, but our main goal is to normalise talking about feelings ahead of it getting to a crisis point and to try and, um, yeah, try and allow people to speak before it gets to a point where, where they're really struggling. And we've been really lucky to kind of collaborate with you on the International Women's Day, for example. And I think your messaging really chimes with uh, our uh, Be Kind movement at, at the council. I just wanted to take you back a little bit. To, so after you'd launched it, um, were you kind of taken aback a little bit with the reaction and how people... Yeah, I can see you both smiling there. So, uh, I don't think we've ever caught up. Yeah, yeah, we, but, we, haven't, we, we definitely haven't caught up with it. We're, you know, it, we started and we knew that it was going to be... Well, we, we, we believed in ourselves from day one, didn't we? But we, we had no idea how it was going to be received. And initially, before we'd even like started posting, we were worried about you know putting ourselves out there. It is, the, it's a brand and it's a business, but it's also extremely personal to us and it's our story as well. Um, so we were quite worried about that, weren't we? And, and felt, um, yeah, a little bit scared of a bit like- vulnerable. A, a bit vulnerable. Yeah, but as soon as, what, sorry, go on. And as soon as we started getting into it, that's when that like, Instagram really took off. We opened the space, and then two weeks later, we went down into lockdown two. So for nine months, me and Kira worked seven days a week in the coffee shop, having no idea what we were doing, just winging it every single day. And this one time, it was like, oh, we've created the space to make people feel good, and they can't come to the space. So what, like, how are we going to make people feel good outside of the space? So that's when we did our first billboard campaign. We plastered everywhere with positive messaging when people was on their daily walks. We've just done one with yourselves. We get tagged in the one in Wigan so All many time, times. Yeah. So many times. Um, so for us, that was something that rocket the brand. And then just before lockdown, we actually had Juno's first birthday party in the space. We had 25 dogs in the space. It was the Sunday before the second lockdown, wasn't it? It was crazy busy. Kira was in the kitchen buttering crumpets because we had no chef and I was pretending to be a barista for the day. And Kira did a post saying how to go into lockdown two post and it literally rocketed. So overnight, within 24 hours, we reached we got another 120,000 followers. So we'd we gone was, from speaking to like 20,000 people, this kind of s small, medium sized following community of, of people who all shared the same values and we were putting out our message into them. And it felt like we kind of knew all of our followers in a way. And then it was terrifying then going to like 150,000 people and being like, wow, there's so many more people um, who are kind of listening and, and want to hear what we've got to say so that kind of took a little bit of time didn't it to get our heads around but but yeah i mean we we're still we still haven't caught up with it everything has happened so quickly like we we go on podcasts or we we get asked like where's feel good club going to be in five years and we're like it's not even three years old yet and we're we feel like we've done <laughs> so much it, even when we talk about it now i'm like i still can't quite believe it we still haven't really caught up to to where we are. So we hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. We're gonna have a quick ad break, but don't worry, we'll all be back later. And before we go into it, Rosie, so I'm just gonna get a quick plug in yeah. in that we've got the latest version of Borough Life Plus, which is our a digital edition of the magazine. There's some fresh content on there now. So Rosie, to find Borough Life Plus and also the back catalogues of Borough Life magazine and also the podcast and everything else that we do uh, associated with Borough Life, where do people find it? head to wigan.gov.uk forward slash borough life plus. And we've actually got a proper advert this time, so this is a good one. Enjoy. When you're out, don't spoil the view. Take your rubbish home with you. Keep it clean. Keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean. Don't let your litter spoil the scene. Use the bin and keep it clean. Keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean. Do you think that there's almost like an element of fate to that in that, I was going to ask you about the, the impact of the, of the pandemic 
I almost feel like your message is, was just the right thing at the right time yeah. because that was probably the time when everyone was going a bit like introspective a little mm -hmm. bit and starting to think just about their own personal well-being more because it, it, it did become like the thing, didn't it? Everybody was going through a tough time. Yeah. 100%. Do you know as well how many times we get, oh, you was perfect timing, weren't you? And we were like, yeah, like it sounds like we set up the pandemic <laughs> to make the business grow. And we were like, nah. like we was always, we've always been here. The pandemic then came. Mm. But yeah, I think we was like, we restarted Field Club like the year before that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously then the pandemic hit and then everyone was like, oh, you're like, you're, it's the perfect timing for your business to start. We were like, we've been here for a year, but that definitely rocketed us. It, it kind of opened the door for people to speak more. I think a lot of people were talking about their mental health and feelings more. Everyone was feeling obviously lonely in the house. So for us, it, it definitely helped with the brand, but it also just reflected for us like how much we are needed constantly. I think now, we are out of it and it is, you know, it's sort of coming back and air quotes again, norm. Um, I think the conversation and the, the hype of it is slowing down, but no one's mental health is just disappearing just because the pandemic's finished. So for us, that's why we're still here, still shouting, still screaming, still trying to normalise it because I think it did, everyone thought about it and then it came a bit like a bit of a trend and then now I feel like it's slowing down. So for us, yeah, it, um, it definitely helped the brand and rocketed the brand, but for us, it's still just like, we're still here, we're still, we still need we to still talk need about to talk. it. There's still yeah. so much more to do around that subject. And I think one of the things I was kind of thinking about, like I've got friends who come to Manchester and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Feel Good Club. Like they're from like Kent. Um, and, but they've heard about you. And I think one of the things you were saying was obviously about, you know, you've had to put yourself out there. And I can imagine that was so scary when you had like all these new followers and stuff like that. But I think it's really important for a lot of your followers in terms of like having you as role models. Um, and I just, I just wanted to ask. Obviously, the space is really queer friendly. Is it, is it the space you kind of dreamt of growing up and about your experiences and that, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you didn't make me cry then. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is a, it's a beautiful space, and you know that that isn't just down to us as well. That's down to our team, like the the people who who work in the club every day alongside us. They create such a beautiful and, and safe environment for people, and I think we. We'd always, we never really, so we didn't necessarily start Feel Good Club and think, right, we're going to have a physical space or we're going to do clothing and we're going to be this brand. We started from like the purpose. It was, okay, I've been through this struggle with my mental health and now I'm in a position where I can kind of talk about it and let people know that it gets better and encourage other people to talk about how they're feeling as well. So we didn't necessarily start it thinking, right, we're going to make this big business and we're going to do this, that and the other. It kind of just happened. We'd always spoken like in the past because our backgrounds have been music. We've done events at uni. Like we were kind of the people that all of our friends used to come to for the parties or we'd always be putting something on. So it kind of naturally gravitated that way. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't necessarily happen with like a, a plan the, the way that we got the physical space i when amy said earlier in air quotes i got a, a real job my job was um director of happiness and people for a social media agency so i was in in um, charge of looking after the culture making sure that we had great mental health and well-being practices in the workplace and from the day i'd started there we the the company grew super super quick so we were constantly expanding the office and we're working with a guy called Atul, who is an interior designer in Manchester. His company is called Sheila Bird. And me and him became really good friends. You know Sheila Bird? I saw you both nodding. So, yeah, Sheila Bird are working on the galleries project. And we're nice. I've seen that and got announced last week. I saw that, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Atul will Atul. sort you right out. Yeah. <laughs> he is, we always say that we're Atul protected um, <laughs> because he is like our, our guardian angel, mm -hmm. isn't he? Um, but, him and I were in New York. I, I looked after the New York offices as well, and we were just expanding over there. So me and him had gone over to New York, and he'd seen Feel Good Club and, and seen that we were doing something, and I had one of the hoodies on one day, and he was like, what is this Feel Good Club? What are you and Amy up to? What are you doing? I said, oh, well, we started this brand. We, we want to make people feel good. We want to bring people together. We want to do events, and like we kind of think we want to have like a physical space to do that in. And he was like, yeah, do it then. And I was like, well, I ain't got the money to do that like we don't have anything to invest into it so he said leave it with me um thought nothing of it a couple of weeks later i'm back in the manchester office and he bursts through the door and goes right i know the space and i know the guy who's going to borrow you the money to do it just needs a business plan tomorrow morning so i was like 
okay, never wrote a business plan, called Amy, Amy, get onto Google, let's make a business plan. So the Is opportunity- 24 hours. Yeah, yeah we, we stayed on making it. So we, ne we didn't necessarily go searching for it. The opportunity came and we always talk about like kind of manifestation and what actually that means. And we'd, we'd actually written Feel Good Club Coffee House 2022 on the, uh, 2020 on our fridge. And no, no way of knowing how we were going to get to it, but we knew we wanted this phys physical space for it. And, um, and the opportunity presented itself, and we definitely weren't ready for it. We had no experience. We didn't know what we were doing, but we believed in ourselves enough to say yes to it. And I would say that with kind of manifestation, it's not necessarily just visualizing, this is what I want, and this is where I want to be. It's having that self-belief to go, right, there's an opportunity there. I'm just going to say yes to it, and we'll figure it out along the way. Um, so we so did that's how the physical space came. And then once we had the physical space, obviously being, being queer, being wise, we was also then like in the northern quarter as well. There's not many representation of that. You've obviously got um, an area, Canal Street, but then it was like, well, why is it just that area? So for us, it was really important to put queer events on. It was important for us to be not just like putting rainbows everywhere and making it really like super super queer. Like oh my god, we're, we're queer. Like for us, it was more like the events that we was putting on, what we were speaking about, what our menu, what books we have, uh, making sure it's accessible was really important to us. So yeah. Growing up, I wish I would have had a coffee shop in my local area that made me feel accepted. And I think that we do that a lot now. We have a lot of regulars who come in for that. But they're also really happy that it's not just like rainbows everywhere. And it's like, it's like- It's a, just inherently queer. We're yeah. queer, a lot of our team are queer. It's just, it's a queer space. It's, it's for everybody, but I think- You also feel, you yeah, also feel safe, yeah. yeah. Rosie just asked a brilliant question there about uh, some really important topics. Now I'm about to spoil things here by trying to um, almost like nail you, nail you down on something that might be uh, difficult to kind of reduce to maybe one answer. But yeah, have you got a favourite, um, like one of your positive affirmations and that you're talking about the billboards and the one in Wigan, have you got a favourite one at the moment or just one from, from all the, the back catalogue? That I oh. think my favourite is the world is a better place with you in it because that literally is so important. I think when you can be in a, in a bad headspace, when you're having a bad day, you know, whatever that looks like, just remembering that like the world is a better place with me in it. I think that just really hit home, it hits home. And it reminds you that like there is only one of you. It's this huge world, but there is only one of you and it needs you in it. That's why you're in it. So for me, that's my favorite quote. Mm -hmm. I love that one as well. I, I think that one's really good, that one. We put that on the billboards in lockdown, didn't we? And and so many people resonated with that. We got so many lovely messages mm. about that. I think, I think mine. So every every Sunday, I do a Sunday reminders post, and it's probably one of the most popular things that we're now known for as a brand. In in lockdown, as we came out of lockdown, anytime we'd meet people, they go, "Oh yeah, I saw your billboards in lockdown." And now when when people when we meet people when we're out and about, they're like, "Oh, I love your Sunday reminders." And Sunday reminders is kind of like a, a thing for me. I, I do them every Sunday evening and I'm kind of like decompressing everything that's happened that week and I just write it as and when what I'm feeling and people resonate with, with them so much and I love when I write something and put it out online, seeing other people saying that they needed it as well because as much as we do everything on, on our brand and on our Instagram for other people, it's also nice to see that other people are, are feeling similarly to you. Um, the Sunday when I write start, those. The Sunday reminders start as well because people get like that Sunday fear, or like going back to work on a Monday. You know, you might have had a heady weekend or you've been doing having a full weekend and you're like, oh, back to work on Monday. That's how it started. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, but trying just, to combat the Sunday scaries. Just on that, I want to promote as well. Kira does them, promote. <laughs> push the fact that how amazing you are. Like Kira writes them every single morning. They're not pre-batched. They're not pre-thought of, they're not scheduled. Every single morning, Kira wakes up before she does anything for herself and writes those posts. I've never, I help every now and again, but how to do that every single day, like literally blows my mind on a daily basis. But That's you say, don't you like, it's kind of like therapy for you. Like, yeah, it is. It's, um, you know, and as much as, the, the brand is is all about talking and normalizing, speaking about your feelings. That's actually something that I really struggle with myself and I'm always very open and honest on on the Instagram page that it it's really difficult for me to do that. So writing is kind of the way that I get it out. Um, and I, I do it through through the posts and, and I think just to go back to that question though, I think my favourite at the moment is um, I can't remember the exact quote, but I I talk a lot in the posts about not holding yourself to an expectation of 
what you're at when you're at your best, like when you're in your best headspace, when you've got high energy, um, when you've maybe had like a, a good restful week or weekend. Um, I think sometimes we can get into the habit of comparing like a day where we might be lower energy or we might have had a lot going on. And I was trying to say that your best looks different every day because everything fluctuates, your moods, your mental health, everything in life fluctuates all the time. So trying to get to people to remember that you can't hold yourself to like the expectations that you do when you're at your very best versus when you might not be. They're two pretty good answers there. I feel better about my question now. <laughs> you bailed me out there. So it was a bit of a wrap up for everybody who might have been listening to this episode and, and have found you guys for the first time or they know about you but want to learn more. Like where where do they where do they find you? The, the, what's the location of the um, the cafe and yeah, how do they find you on social media? So they can follow us on Instagram, which is where we are most days um, online at We Are Feel Good Club. We've got our TikTok, which we're like getting down with the kids now, <laughs> like figuring out how to use TikTok. Um, but we started using that quite a lot now, haven't we? So that's at Feel Good Club. And then the coffee shop is Northern Quarter, Hilton Street. Um, can't miss it. Loads of windows pink everywhere um, and a lot of good good vibes yeah. oh so thank you so much amy and kira but before we go i was just gonna ask one final question um which is what is your favorite thing to do uh a place to go a place to eat in wigan borough it's got to be pen and flash. pen and flash especially during when we did have that five minutes of Break during lockdown when we just worked seven days a week. Our go to safe space was Pennington Flash. We used to get up earlier, take Juno for a walk, and just clear our heads. So for yeah. us, it's got like a little special place where it's like our safe space. And now it's like it's refurb, we're obsessed. Yeah, place, I was going to say, that's yeah. going on there. <laughs> and some sandwiches and some food there now, can't you? Which yeah. makes it 10 times better. But yeah, whenever, we're, literally, whenever we're feeling stressed, we, we go, go there, don't Pennington we? Flash. And we just do the big loop. But yeah, it always reminds us and reminds me anyway of. Um, of lockdown and just feeling like super heavy like we didn't know what was happening but we'd go there clear our heads and then get into work it's when you get to the top of that hill and you look down on the canal and all the sailboats are there i'm like yeah ah, it's beautiful right. yeah fave place there you go feel See good you club indoors <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks so much thanks Thank for you. having us thanks for having us so a massive thanks there to Amy and Kira, uh, Feel Good Club, and of course Juno the dog. Uh, Rosie, we're at the end of another episode, uh, but if anyone wants to go and find uh, more about Feel Good Club after they've had the introduction from listening to this podcast, where can they be found? You can head to Instagram where they've got a really good following, at We Are a Feel Good Club, but don't forget to follow the council channels as well where we'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on. So the only thing left for me to say, Rosie, is just that it was nice to hear their answer about Pennington Flash because we're thinking that we're going to be over at uh, the Flash for our next episode. Um, so that's something to look forward to in August. Uh, if you would like to leave us some feedback uh, about the episodes or about the, like, the new format for this one, for example, uh, please do get in touch um, via our social media channels. Rosie, is there anything else uh, for episode seven before we wrap up? I don't think so. I just hope that you've enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. See you later.